I'm gonna be honest, bro. If I die over this shit, bro, uh, you probably wouldn't care less, but I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. Uh, if you die over this shit, you should have you say what? I said, if you die on this shit, you should have just fun listened to me. Because if you listen to me, this shit would not go no further than it has. And not make the video of him threatening me? So what if something does happen to me and then boom, nobody knows? If something does happen to you, everybody knows because you've already made multiple posts about it. If you want me to be a villain, bitch, I'll be a fucking villain. You gonna go to hell. It's gonna mm -hmm. be hot as fuck. The title of this video is not clickbait. This is very serious. I'm gonna try not to waste y'all time and get straight into the points. In this video, I went through heartbreak, I've been embarrassed, disrespected, and now I'm being threatened. My life is literally being threatened. All that is happening based off what you clicked on. The title of this video, it is true, y'all, and it all connects. To be honest with you, I can't really talk to y'all like I'm talking, I'm making a YouTube video. I really have to talk to y'all like I'm talking to you, okay? So I'm sorry if I can't be entertaining this video. I have not been on the channel for so long. I know you guys see on the channel because I started talking to this girl, working at the tattoo shop, making videos there, making videos for the boss. I took a major risk leaving my security job, 70 to 60, 80 hours a week, just doing plain old security, sitting in the box. But I was also working on becoming a bigger YouTuber. Focused on my goals, I was focused on my dreams. I was still focused on YouTube and putting the money that I had from that job back into YouTube. And I kept investing, kept investing, and I ran into this tattoo shop. I ran into this girl. Everything is literally on camera. I ran into the girl. We had a little spark or whatever. Man, I, ain't gonna lie. I don't know if I said this earlier, but right here into the Bible, I'm not lying about a lot of stuff I'm saying. Well, I'm not lying about nothing I'm saying in this. Right here on the Bible, I'm carrying it in my right hand, y'all. I'm not, you can't make some of this stuff up I'm saying, y'all. I promise you. I quit my security job to go work for 290 Inc. because this man offered me. He loved the way I edited the video and he offered me a job through the girl. He took the girl phone. He's like, hey man, how much you making there? And I told him how much I'm making, how, long, how much I'm working. At first, the offer was either 3,000 to 3,500 a month. Remember that, y'all, remember that. He offered me an opportunity to come work and do videos at the shop and make YouTube videos, be the media man for the tattoo shop. You feel me? So I was like, damn, this is, that'd be way better. Like literally, it'll help me and my craft and I have time, still have time to do my YouTube thing. I'm gonna have a team of people who are always motivated to work. So I took the opportunity, went over there and I was still talking to a girl until she friends on my ass because um, I mean, like she said she didn't want to hurt me. And I still took that hint when she friends on me. And that's why in the video, like she would keep saying like, I'm just a friend, I'm just a friend. Until I, I finally put my foot down and told her like, hey, I can't keep doing this shit. Like I really like you and I know I can treat you right, but if you're going to keep playing with me and stuff like that, we might as well leave this stuff alone. And that's when she finally said, oh, no, this nigga actually is a man. Took the risk, got the girl, and that's how I ended up at this tattoo shop. For people that didn't know who wouldn't follow along with the videos, I had to just catch you up. While I was talking to this girl, and I'm not going to put too much of her business out there, because y'all got to understand, like, I'm not trying to bash nobody in this video, guys. I'm simply telling y'all the truth of what's going on and why I've been going to inform you guys. And honestly, just to let you guys know because I put this girl onto my channel. I put this whole tattoo shop onto my channel. Basically, she had her own personal addictions in the past that um, I wasn't familiar with, of course. I don't, I mean, like, you know, I'm not gonna go into that, but I'm gonna just say for sure, bro, like, I was there and I helped this girl literally try my very best and went out of my way and did a lot of things. I'm not trying to like, ooh, boast my ego, but I'm telling you the fact, the, the facts, y'all. Like, I've always been this type of man in a relationship. I ain't gonna lie, good guys finish last. I was being so good to her, bro. Like, I helped this girl become better as a person. She even told me herself I saved her off what she was going through. And it made me feel like I, I, I made me feel good as a person and everything, bro. Like, it was a lot of things in this relationship where, you know, we was around each other for a long time, bro. Like, you know, we was together, like, damn near together every day. Bro, you gotta realize we slept together. We slept together, worked together. And we did a lot of shit together, bro. Like, it's, it's crazy how I got attached to this girl. I did things, and I also accepted things as a man that I got to take to the fucking grave, y'all. Accepted things as a man, bro, that most men would never do in their life. And you just got to take my word on that, bro. It was so many red flags in, that, in the relationship, low-key, but I just kept ignoring them, though. Meanwhile, me trying with this relationship and stuff like that, I'm not even getting paid the payments I thought I was gonna get paid. Nigga. Nigga. There was a point in time, y'all, where I was about to go to San Diego. It was a bad video where I said I spent zero dollars on the vacation. Yeah, I lied. I'm sorry. I did have money for that trip. I mean, it wasn't a lot, but I mean, it's it. Sorry, I told you I was in the restroom. That loud ass toy. I was not getting paid for what I was worth. I ain't gonna lie, it was cool to just get some money. But I was, I gave him like two videos one time. This nigga gave me $300. I 
I gave this nigga two videos in a week. He gave me three hundred dollars, y'all. I was promised three thousand a month. So how is this gonna add up in a week? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense, y'all. It did. It never made sense. So it's cool. I didn't speak up as a man about that until I, I we was about to go to San Diego and I gave him five videos in a week. So I'm thinking like. If you're going to give me $400 for two videos, so obviously it's $200 per video, right? Right? You give me $400 for two videos I give you for your YouTube channel. So obviously, if I give you five and I'm telling you I'm finna go out of town for a little bit for the days that I'm already off, you know what I'm saying? That's overtime work in, in anybody else's mind, right? That's overtime work. Why the hell this motherfucker going? I gave him four videos. I'm working on the fifth one, right? And he used to do shit like... This is when I started realizing who the fuck this man was, bro. I really used to look up to this dude while I was in this relationship. And I really did. And I looked to him for him and for advice. I thought he gave me good advice on how to be a man and stuff. I really looked up to him as a man, bro. Like, I see him taking care of his family, working hard every single day, night, complaining about nothing, bro. It's just still doing, like, you know what I'm saying? Me and him had the same mindset. He may have been doing tattoos, but I'm doing YouTube. It's the same mindset with everything, y'all. Consistency and hard work. I seen this before my very eyes, and I wasn't around that before I got around that nigga. So he inspired me to keep going. I really appreciate it bro all the times i kept getting into my feelings and i kept failing he didn't give up on me and that's what made me feel like this nigga is one of the realest niggas in my life that's what i thought now you see, you seen the title of the video <laughs> shit the vibe bro like something in my gut was telling me like i shouldn't even i don't think i should be here my friends kept telling me forget that tattoo shop you don't need that tattoo shop you can do your own thing jordan we believe in you and, you know, I just didn't believe in myself as much, man. I just got comfortable in that tattoo shop for real, man. Because I thought, hey, I just kept fucking up, y'all. I didn't have self-discipline or nothing. And I'll be real, like, it takes a real man to say where he fucks up at. He can't do it, though. He ain't doing it. He ain't. I didn't know my boss and my girl were like this, bro. She told me they knew each other since she was 17. I just didn't expect them to be, like, that, that, that close, you know what I'm saying? Because the stuff I was seeing, like, I would walk in the room and they would, she would be right next to him, cheek to cheek, right under him, you know what I'm saying? And we in a relationship. It'd be times where this new would literally, like, literally, they would play in my fucking face, y'all. He picked her up by the legs and had her back dangling on the couch. Like, hey, bro, I know this your girl and all. But I knew it longer. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think nothing of that at the time, bro. Because I would have never thought this old-ass dude would want to... This old-ass man, this damn near 40-year-old dude would want to clap. You know, would have something going on or had something going on with my girl. And obviously, if it did, wouldn't you expect your girl to tell you if you if, if she had sexual relations with somebody in the workplace that you both are in? Wouldn't you expect your girl to tell you that? I don't know. I just thought that's a mature thing to do. I remember it was a time when she seen me cry one time, bro. I cried about a situation, bro. And this man literally was at work talking about some some girl sent told me he was crying on some shit. And I was like, damn, that sounds like it in the situation, Loki sounded like me, the way he was describing it. And then he started laughing. And I'm over looking at my girl in the background, like, damn, I thought I could change this girl. I thought I could save this girl, really. But she didn't want to be saved. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I, I don't like to say the names and stuff, but it's like, like how can I how can I, I already put them on my channel, bro? Oh, ugh. That ain't gonna do nothing but shit. God was sending me a lot of warnings, y'all, and I ain't gonna lie, I just wasn't taking them. And that's really my fault, to be honest. A lot of signs that God was showing me, and I ignored because I didn't want to see the flaws. I only kept forcing myself to see something that was not there. If y'all gonna learn anything from this, two lessons. Don't mix business with don't mix business with pleasure and want and stuff. Hey, uh yeah. I remember there was one time, bro, he texted her talking about some how does it feel working around all three of your niggas. And I'm like, I ain't look, bro. I come to find out now she was tatting up somebody at the time, June 6th, she was tatting up somebody who she used to fuck with and never even told me, bro. And the other nigga was me. And the third nigga, hmm, who can that be? And the boss texted her that, like, come on now. Obviously, it was the boss, okay? Like, you see the title of the video. Things would get dramatic in that tattoo shop, bro. I ain't gonna lie. The advice he give me would be, like, wishy-washy. How to handle her, like, how to handle her as a woman. Like, put my foot down as a man and shit like that. But And then would tell me shit like, hoes will be hoes, bro. Not saying she's a hoe. I quote. <laughs> All these signs, bro. And it was, like, some other stuff, too, that I'm not gonna mention. Like, that regarding massages and, uh, yeah, finally came to the conclusion and said, hey, bro, I think something had to happen between them two. 
And I'm gonna ask her, I asked her, did you ever have any sexual relations with anybody else? Did you ever have a relationship with anybody else in that shop? And she said, no. And I said, all right, did you ever have any sexual relationship with anybody in that shop? She said, what are you trying to ask me? I'm sorry, just reliving that moment makes me go crazy, bro. Like, I just asked her straight up. I said, did you, like, did you ever fuck? And she said, Jordan, when I said I don't want to hurt you. Bruh. Yeah, it hurt me. Because y'all just heard me say how much I looked up to the dude. But, however, she told me nothing happened while we was together, right? So when she tells me that, I got to take a word for it, right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, hey. I don't see no proof that something did happen. I just know that you guys are being too fucking friendly. What did they get to Drake say? Same things I do to women. When I know we used to fuck, I seen all of that when we was at work. And when I found out in the moment, y'all, I was stupid pee about it. Like, I was a player. I was like, shit. I had a feeling because, like, off intuition. But, like, I mean, that's the past. Like, whatever, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm just happy you with me now. Like, as long as it ain't happening with us, I mean, we good. I just wanted to know because the way y'all was making it seem, I couldn't help but to just ask. So everything was good, right? Tell me why she gonna text this dude right after, right after I found out and text him, he knows. I didn't know at the time that she sent that text to him because what made me question it was when I was at t car texting me talking about some, I told you leave that girl alone, fool. Now that you know, can you work past your feelings? She ain't gonna unsend the message, bro. I told my girl at the time, I said, bro, how does he know? This nigga is not God. He is not no spirit. I know for a fact, like, you you told him, bro. You told him I know, and I was gonna play it cool. I was literally gonna play it P like nothing happened, but it's like, you literally told him and everything. And I was going to talk to him about it because my whole thing is once I found out, y'all, everything was replaying in my head. All those moments I told y'all about when they was just all touchy, touchy together, all like just cool. Same shit you do to women when you know you used to fuck. The more I started overthinking about like the past because I'm like, bro, this nigga told me shit like, I know it's your girl at all, but I knew a long girl. Grab her by her legs and play with her and joke around. And I was just like me personally, bro, I wouldn't want nobody touching my wife like that. And I wouldn't want nobody joking around my wife like that. He would say jokes in the workplace. I remember she brought her friend in and her friend that got a breast reduction. And, and bro, this nigga was making jokes all about her titties the whole entire day. Literally, bro, he kept making jokes about this girl's titties. And I'm like, bro, stop. Like, I ain't gonna lie my head. I'm like, bro, this shit is d disgusting. I should have said something, but it's like, man, what am I saying something in this man's business? He can just literally fire me and keep my girl here and probably keep clapping. I, my, my, my emotions was going through a lot at the time. Cause I'm like, bro, if they didn't, they were never gonna tell me, bro. I'm be honest, they were never gonna tell me. They were gonna keep playing with my face. That nigga said some shit like, man, if you don't wipe her up, you just leave a room for somebody to put that lump on If you didn't have nothing going on with the nigga, or you didn't have any type of feeling towards him, why would you text him right away? I'm your man. You should just be happy I'm content with everything you ever told me about you, bro. For real. A man to man, bro. And see what I'm coming from, y'all. Man to man, why couldn't you just tell me this from the jump and say, hey, bro, I be fucking on her, bro, but I don't think you want to mess with that. I don't think you want to wipe that up right now. I think you would rather just want to stay focused, bro. I'm telling you, I be here all the time. Don't ruin your life. Don't ruin yourself. You got a lot going for you. Say that shit straight up as a man. Are you a man, bro? Say that shit straight up as a man, because as a man, I would have told any nigga that who I seen potential in, bro. Not nobody who I just wanted to manipulate and use. That's all you do, bro. That's all you do. And y'all going to realize that. Any nigga that's around him is going to realize that the hard way, the easy way or the hard way, unless that man changes, bro. I'm going to tell you straight up. And I'm not trying to bash nobody, bro. I'm telling you the straight up truth. But I got over it, bro. I got over a lot of things. Even that situation with her going around with him, I got over it, y'all. And still worked past my feelings for real. Because I said I don't want to fall out of business with, uh, with a nigga over some pussy, right? I got to be grateful for what I can get right now, and. Just keep building, right? That was my mindset and everything. As that was going on, I was going through it. Hurricane Barrel came up, and this girl trying to keep me out during the hurricane, bro, like because she needed some space because I kept like I was I was a little still hurt when she had left out the house, and I told her 
And I, I was like telling her, like, I look stupid. I told her one time, like, I look stupid, bro. I, I was just killed complaining about it. I feel like I still look stupid and I have nobody else to complain to about this close to me. So I just told her, like, I really do feel stupid. And then she tried to really, honestly, bro, gas like me that same day she came back talking about something. I'm real insecure in the relationship. And I'm like, I'm not the same man she, she liked whenever I... I'm not being the same man she liked whenever she met me and stuff like that. It was all type of stuff. That was the beginning of shit going downhill, you know? Hurricane Barrel was literally amongst us. She literally told me to go home, drive 40 minutes back home during this damn hurricane. But I'm not driving home, bro. I told her I'm not going home. I'll go in the living room. I'll sleep in my car outside or something. But like, I'm not feeling, I get it. You don't gotta be next to me or something, bro. But at least care about my safety, bro. Cause I could die out there fucking crazy. It just shows a lot how much you actually care about it. You ain't gonna give me $200 to go to a hotel. Nigga, I ain't not going to the hotel. I took your $200. This girl really got the nerve to kick me out during a hurricane. I'm like, going nowhere, bro. Literally, bro. I'm, I'm scared, but I can't. I'm scared for my life. I was just being weak. I was a simp. I went up, went, 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 ooh, 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 whoa. I cannot talk. When I went back up in the room, tell me why this girl, and I'm going to put the picture right here, bro. This girl going to make a dummy in her bed, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck? Her location said she was still home and she wasn't even at home, bro. This girl going Uber somewhere in the middle of a goddamn hurricane, bro. Leaving her house just because she wanted some space from me. Nigga, I promise you I wasn't that goddamn bad. I promise you I wasn't. I promise you I wasn't doing nothing to make this girl feel like she was less of a person, bro. I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the conclusion right here, man, to where it all unfolded. And where we get to the threats. My boss's girl that called me. I don't even got this lady number saved, bro. I was literally shook. I was having a conversation with my homie. And then next thing I said, hold on, bro. Somebody calling me. And I said, hello? She was like, Jordo, don't lie to me. I was like, who the fuck? I'm not who I said, who was this? And she told me who it was. I was like, oh, shit. She said, I'm going through uh, his phone. And she basically started reading what she already knew, bro. She told me that she asked this nigga if she... If he did something basically with my girl and this nigga got his own self caught up, y'all. Like he literally gonna text my girl talking about some she knows. Talking about some she knows. I'm denying, I'm denying. I ain't have to say a damn thing to be honest with you. Yo girl told me this. She told me this. His girl told me this, bro. And I told her, ma'am, and I ain't gonna lie. At first I was denying, 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 denying because I said, bro, I'm not gonna lose my job over this. What are you calling me for if you already know what's up? She was like, no, because she texted you talking about some he knows. So what do you know, Jordan? What do you know? And I said, I don't know what they got going on, to be honest, man. She said, why does it seem like you're lying? Why are you lying right now? I know you're lying and stuff. And I'm like, and she started reading the messages, bro. She started reading messages that I haven't seen. Talking from, from my girl, talking about some, I deleted all the messages. He has to go through my, he has to see my our messages and stuff. I deleted them. There's no way he could have seen them. Her being sneaky and stuff. Deleting, she deleted all these messages off her phone, but the wife, the girlfriend, his girlfriend was reading me her messages off of his phone. So I didn't know all, I didn't know she was talking that shit, bro. I didn't know she was talking that shit behind my back. It was being, playing both sides, bro. And I've said some shit in front of her for real, bro. And, and little do I know, she just plays both sides. And this girl, this is the type of girl that would literally get your ass set up, bro, and used by both parties. I feel like I've been fucking played with, bro, and not respected. I feel very, very disrespected, to be honest. Very disrespected and you and very used, to be honest with you. And on God, bro, I'm only making this video because you started threatening me. I don't want to have nothing to do with that tattoo shop anymore, bro. If y'all one of his people watching this video, y'all got to understand from a human perspective. Cut all this money out the way. I don't care how much money you're going to pay to come off my head, bro. Look, this man, I put my heart and soul and passion and gave up a lot for this nigga in his company. And the only thing you had to give me was some goddamn respect, bro. The same respect that I was showing you. And I thought that's what a real man does, bro. He treats people how he wants to be treated and has the utmost right integrity at all means possible, at all times possible. And that's where he gets good in life. And that's how he gets the good things in life. Long story short, he found out. And here's the messages right here. Um, he texted me off his wife phone. Are you serious? This is... This mother nigga, stop texting my motherfucking girl. I got your people address. I'm not playing with you. And if you do, you're going to jail. You little weak ass boy. I'm on some other shit, Jordan. I don't play like that. I will hurt you. I was never going to make a video about this, y'all, until literally his girl called me telling me stuff that I needed to know.
and this needed to come out. I wouldn't even make no video about this at all, y'all, to be honest. I would have took this to the grave until this motherfucker started to threaten me. It's not about the girl, bro. It's not about this girl. He needs, he needs to understand it is not about no girl in this situation. It's all about borderline respect, bro. Respect. As a man, borderline respect, bro, because I showed you a lot of respect. Literally, bro, you played mind games with my stupid ass. When you was literally just fucking on this girl not too long ago, you literally kept playing with me, bro. You literally kept playing with me. You could have been straight up as a man, bro, and told me straight up what you did. And none of this shit would have never happened. Instead, you got yourself caught up. You got yourself caught up, and now you threatening me, and I got to make these videos, brother. And now you want to get people after me because... You couldn't just leave me the fuck alone. I know you was just trying to scare me, bro, with these messages, but I'm actually taking them a lot serious because you're a millionaire who can actually pay people to get me killed. And uh, I know that you know people on your block and stuff who would do it, but I mean, if they, if they got anything to live for, bro, they won't do it, bro. If they got any right or moral respect for themselves, they wouldn't do it. But I mean, you manipulate people, bro. And you think money is everything. You're lucky, bro, that I got the balls to come out, not other people. There are more messages, dude keeps threatening me. And he started bragging about how we he, how he gonna fuck her again and stretch her out, and stretch my ex out and stuff like that. Cause we not together no more, y'all. I'm not with that girl no more. A message to my ex, I say this, you can be way bigger and I still believe in you, even though it ain't work out with us. I still believe that you could be something better than him and better for yourself. So please don't give up, even though you hurt me. I still believe in you, and I forgive you. We're definitely taking these threats very seriously. Um, I am, and I definitely have people that go to war behind me and will crash out behind me, but I wouldn't put them in this situation because it has nothing to do with them. It's us, mano y mano. Now, we can leave this where it's at right now, to be honest. We definitely can just leave it where it's at right now between me and you, boss, or, you can just keep escalating things and you just end up in prison, to be honest with you, bro. You will, you will, honestly. So leave me the hell alone, leave where the hell is at. And I'm saying that respectfully. Take your L to the chin and move on, just like I did, bro. Oh God, and I looked up to you, dude. I'm not saying don't go to the tattoo shop. I'm not trying to bash the tattoo shop because there are good artists in there, but I'm not going back to that damn tattoo job. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm not going back. That shit is not worth a nigga mental. Especially after this. Nigga, they gonna beat my ass. This girl ended up finding out. My girl ended up getting what she was asking for. And honestly, God just spun the block for me. We're gonna leave this drama where it's at right here and get right back on the grind because um, I'm moving pretty soon. I mean, like, regardless of the fact that he was looking for me or not, the nigga not gonna find me. I'll be honest, like, you... You got to know people everywhere. I mean, like, nigga, you got to know people in Louisiana, to Oklahoma, to Ohio, to that California, nigga. I'm about to get out of here. He probably will send people after me because they think I'm bashing him or something. I was hurt by this whole situation. That was the reason I wasn't posting. And I was just trying to tell y'all, man, like, to spread awareness. Like, if I'm gone, if I'm dead, bro, y'all know the first person to look at. I said me and Tank both. I told Tank, I said, tell everybody to leave that shit the fuck alone, including yourself. He sent me a screenshot of him telling his people to leave it the fuck alone. And they texted, and that was that was eight hours ago. That was at like one o'clock this morning. And then they texted him right after you posted, talking about some bro. He's not leaving it alone. So what the fuck? Like, Jordan, I can't help. And I, and it's not my job to, quite frankly, but this shit is fucking childish. Nothing is going to happen to that nigga. That's the problem. You can post whatever you want and use whatever messages you want, but at the end of the day, nothing is incriminating enough to send that nigga to jail. So all it's gonna do is cause problems where it doesn't need to be problems. And nobody wants to because it's, it's not your true. fucking business to be out there sharing. So why is he it's threatening me? Why does he keep it's threatening not. me then, bro? Why does he keep threatening me? Why I'm not saying. I'm only talking about me and my business, anything I've, e dude, if I experience something in my lifetime, of course it's going to be my business. If so none of that shit got nothing to fucking do with you. Your feelings are hurt? Okay, I understand that. Talk about your fucking feelings. But anything else is not your jurisdiction to be speaking about. And you're causing war between shit that don't need to be fucking had a war about. I'm the one getting all the back end of this. And that's why I'm laying on your ass right now, because this shit is fucking ridiculous. Why don't you just drop it? Just drop it. Be a grown man. Keep it pushing. You want to do better? Why couldn't that nigga drop it, bro? I'm not no fucking... I'm not the fucking villain here, bro. I need you to understand that, bro. 
I understand you're not the villain, but you're not. You're also not the victim, and that's the role you're playing. Nigga, I literally wouldn't even. Sorry, they your mom literally texted me, threatening me. Your mom literally texted me, threatening me while I was chilling at home, bro. Come on now, you better pray and hope that nothing yeah, happens to my family. Got fucking snuck, the fuck. When you could have dropped this shit and let this shit go, you still kept posting. My mom knows about that shit too. So even even whenever she realized that it wasn't your fault. After I told her everything that was Yeah, bro, and then you, and then the Tank kept you, Tank Tank kept threatening me, bro. Tank keeps threatening me. So, what okay, do you want me to do? Bringing me into that shit. That's the man shit. Cuz you, you told me. Like Cuz you told me. You told me. I ain't even just making people aware. Okay, so, keep me the fuck out of that shit. I don't want nothing to do with none of this shit. I don't want to I don't want my name mentioned in no fucking YouTube video. Nothing. Uh 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 you will get sued for this. Oh, uh, you think so? Yeah. You, know, character. you yeah. think so? Bro, what are you trying to say? It's gonna be mm -hmm. hot as fuck. Yeah. If you die over this shit, you should have hey. just fucking listened to me. That's all I got to say. You say what? I said, if you die over this shit, you should have just fucking listened to me. Because if you listen to me, this shit would not go no further than it has. And not make the if video of him threatening like me? So what if something does happen to me and then boom, nobody knows? If something does happen to you, everybody knows because you've already made multiple posts about it. Y'all know the first person to question if a little scratch happens on me. If I get jumped, I don't have no ops out here, y'all. promise you, bro, I'm not trying to be no bad person. I promise you. I'm going to keep being my genuine self and keep giving my heart out to the people that deserve it. Not just relationship-wise. That tattoo shot I gave my heart out to y'all, bro. And I just wish y'all gave it right back. That's my story. I hope I don't die.